Welcome back to Forby, welcome back to my workshop. And today on the bench, I've got a Land Rover differential, which I bought second hand recently. But what makes this differential special is the fact that it is a Detroit True Track limited slip differential. Now I've already started to pull it apart. And the reason I've started to pull it apart is because if you look here, this is a three point input spigot for the differential and this was a rear differential. And on my Defender, I want it as a front differential. So the general consensus is to flip the gearing. Apparently they work better in one direction than the other. Now because this was a rear diff, I'm going to make an assumption that it was set up to be a rear diff. But I'd like to check that before we go any further. So let's show you very quickly how it was before I started to strip it down. So here we have the, the differential case. And as you can see, it's machined to accept the bearings and the differential carri carrier, which drops in like this okay ignore that bearing race that's fallen out very slightly and then that in turn was held down with these and the bearings were locked in place using these threaded special nuts here so we extracted the bolts out of there took that off took that off and that allows us to pull out the diff carrier itself, which is here. Now, as part of the initial inspection, one of the things I did was a pattern check on the teeth. And the eagle-eyed amongst you might see a yellow paste on the crown wheel here. Now, this is in fact, this isn't grease, this isn't normal grease, but it is a grease paint. And this is a special grease, you can see here, there's a little yellow pot of it that is used for checking the fit up of gears or the meshing of gears. And it's, a, it's an engineer's paste. Now, the reason I did this pattern check in the first place was just to identify how well this differential was set up by whoever it was that built it. And in fact, it was set up really well. The pattern or the meshing pattern from the pinion to the crown gear I was getting a lovely mesh pattern right in the center of the gears, which suggests to me that it was set up really well. So I'm gonna set up some soft jaws in my vise and we'll throw this in and we'll start to strip down the bearing from it. If I find my soft jaws, there's one of them. And there's the other one. And there's the other one. Right, so we'll chuck this diff carrier in the voice, tighten it up, and then we're going to pull these bearings. Now, before I started this work, I ordered a pair of bearings, and these are tapered roller bearings, Timkin. And I'm just going to check that they are what they're supposed to be. And the original bearing that's on the race, on the original bearing that's on the differential carrier is LM102910 and I don't know if you can see that, LM102910. So I just wanted to check that they were correct before I ripped into this. So this is one half of the puller that grips around the underside and the inside of this roller bearing and there's another piece that goes on top which actually does the extraction. So let me put that piece on for you. Now the way this puller works is it has this threaded bar which pushes down on the center, but as the center's hollow there, we need something to fill the gap. And I've got this, which is part of my hydraulic bench press, actually, and it fits in there just nicely. And now we can assemble the rest of the puller. So 
17mm spanner. Just snug these up a touch. So I've got the two bolts up the top snugged up. I've got these two long bolts snugged up. And I've got a spanner on top of this threaded bolt portion. And all I'm going to do now is start to wind it off. And hopefully you can see there that the bearing is starting to lift off. And you can probably also see how much that race is being deformed, which is why we would never be using the same bearing again. That bearing is scrap. And if anyone's interested in one of these bearing pullers, you'll find them on our website. You'll find, have a look in the tool section, the garage section of our website, you'll find one of these bearing pullers in there. So here we've got the true track diff with its bearing removed sitting back on the bench and we're looking down at these gears inside here what we have is we've got a central gear which is broached on the inside for the 24 spline drive shaft and on the outside it is hobbed in a in a gear pattern all the way around to accept these planetary gears and there's three planetary gears for each side of the diff and what I'm looking at now is the mesh between the planetary gear and the central gear which drives the drive shaft so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find some MIG welding wire some TIG welding wire I beg your pardon and ram it down there and see if I can determine which way these gears are turning so what I've got here is some aluminium TIG wire and the reason I'm using aluminium is it's a very very soft material and I'm just going to cut off three pieces or a couple of pieces anyway and I'm going to shove them into the gears just to try and work out which way these gears are turning right okay there's three pieces in So what we're seeing is the rotation of the inner gear here. It wants to rotate clockwise to come out, which means that this diff carrier is definitely set up to be rear. So what we're going to have to do is pull this apart and swap over the gear sets from one side to the other, which means I need to put it back in the vise and pull the bearing from the other side, which I've not yet done. <laughs> it's still on there. So let me do that. And I'll be back with you in a second. Right, we've removed that second race and we've got the diff carrier back on the bench and what we're going to do now is we're going to take out these three bolts and expose those gears. So let's use the gun. One. Right, so under this cover We've got our center gear, which you can see on the inside has got the splines, which drive the half shafts. And then we have three satellite gears. Hopefully we can just lift these out. Come on, they're gonna screw out very slowly. So there's one. Come on. Two. And I'm going to try and preserve both the orientation and where they were inside as well. Three. So there's my first set. let's see what else we've got in there we've got this ring I'm not entirely sure what that is it looks like some sort of oil control ring some bearing surface 
What's that made out of? It's quite sharp. And it's quite got a bit of muck in it. So we'll preserve the orientation. And again, I'm going to put that over here with that. And what else have we got? We've got a very slightly dished washer. And then it looks like we're on to the other side. So let me pull out that dished washer from the other side and put it now on this side of our stack. And now I think we need to flip this over and whip the other side out. So again, we've got a mirror image on this side. Right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to wash all these parts in the parts washer and try and get them as clean as possible in case I've managed to get any swarf in during this process. And then we're going to reassemble it in, uh, in reverse. So here are our gear sets. They're beautifully cut gears. I don't know if you can see that. Beautiful. So we blew off everything with an air gun and everything went through the parts washer. It all seems nice and clean. There was a little bit of crud in here, but not a lot. So we're going to reassemble this. And for our assembly lubricant, I'm going to use this stuff, which is Lucas heavy duty oil stabilizer. A lot of people think that this is snake oil. There seem to be two camps. Those people that think it's snake oil and those people that love it, I happen to be in the camp that loves it. And I'm gonna use this as well, which is a Rocol MTLM, which is assembly and running in paste. And this is a pure molybdenum disulfate paste. It is crazy money. A tube that size costs about 30 quid, but it's the best stuff you can use. Now, one of the things I like about this Lucas is the consistency of it. I mean, it has the consistency of honey. It's crazy stuff. But one of the things that you can do with it is you can put it in neat into differentials and into gearboxes. It actually states that on the side that you can do that. It's like honey. It's stringy and it gets everywhere but it's good gear. Now, despite the gear sets 
being swapped over I'm gonna leave the existing the existing bearing carriers on the on the side that they started off on so let's get some assembly lube on there that's for the top of the gear and you know what before I put this on I'm going to inject just a little bit of EP90 in there as well so let me get my EP90 <coughs> Now, these bolts need to be thread locked in and they need to be torqued up to a specific torque. But all I'm going to do initially is just put them in and just tighten them up just a tad and then we'll back them off once I've got it assembled <clears throat> and reassemble them with some Loctite thread locker so let me just go and in fact you know what I can use the gun I put the gun on a very low torque setting and just rattle them down Right, so continuing on with the gear set, which was the front side into the back, I'm going to need to flip this one over and drop that in. So let me go find another pair of blue gloves. So we've got a very shiny side to this and that's the side I'm going to put some row coll on there and some row coll a little touch of Lucas oil to make a bit of a paste and EP90 on the mating surface down there and drop that in I don't know if you can see that let me move let me move it right under the camera there and that drops in there we're going to do the same again, a bit more row coal. Just to cover that surface. And these washers are very slightly dished. Very, very slightly. And they were dished back to back. So this one needs to drop in that way. Now we move on to this ring and this washer. So that washer now needs to drop in this way up. So let's get some EP90 in there. Drop 
that in. And once again, we've got what appears to be a shiny side and a slightly duller side. Now the shiny side actually wears against the gear. So put a drop of row coal on there. A little bit of the oil stabiliser. Nice and gloopy. This doesn't actually this can't actually move inside this housing because of these ears that stick out. However, the surface of it is a bearing surface, so we'll lube that up nicely. Right, so I need to tighten the bolts down to 65 foot pounds. So I've got my torque wrench here, and we're going to dial that in to 65. So I've got some Loctite, and what we're going to do is we're going to reassemble these bolts with some Loctite on the threads. And we're going to torque them up to 65 foot pounds. Do that without dropping everywhere. So I'm just going to run these home, then we're going to come in with the torque wrench. And I want to try and pull these down gradually, simply because this is actually the line of the bearing. So these, these end caps create the bearing surface and the line of axis of rotation. So they're starting to snug down now. clicking off right that's one side done so we'll flip it over and do the same on the other side there we go 65 foot pounds all around so the next thing to do is to fit the bearings so there we have it, it's completely swapped over, those gear sets have been swapped over, reassembled and lubed up, bolts all to the correct torque and what I'm doing now is I'm just clearing up the bearing journals because we're going to put the new bearings on now. So I did carelessly manage to spill just a little touch of Loctite and the last thing I really want to do is Loctite the bearings on. That will just save the next guy a whole heap of ball ache. And I think what we'll do is we'll take these over to the press to get them put in. So we're over at the press, 
I've got the carrier on the table and I just so happen to have some round aluminium stock and it's the perfect size look at that so let's just bring the press down and see if we can squeeze that bearing back on oh, that's lovely that's just dropping on nicely perfect and what we're going to do is we're going to use the old bearing race that came off to just make sure that that bearing is home so I'm going to flip that over and put that on there like that and find something that I can put in the top that won't fit I want to make sure that that bearing is as far down as it will go. The last thing we want is to set the preload up on these bearings. And because they're tapers, the preload is going to be set by the threaded portion on the special nuts. And the last thing we want is for them not to be quite home and then for them to move once the diff goes into service and cause extra backlash in the gears so let me go and get the next bearing and we'll press that one into the top bring the camera down and see if I can show you what I was talking about now you might not be able to see it but we've pushed down on the outer bearing race and it's got flush with the top of the bearing journal but there is still a very slight gap I don't know if you can see that just between being home and not being home and if we don't get that all the way down that's going to be the difference when this thing goes into service as to whether or not it's going to last or whether or not it's going to be full of backlash and need to be pulled and rebuilt sooner rather than later so we'll do what we did last time which was invert the last bearing race and use that as a press tool just to make sure that this one gets home now even though these aren't precision ground matched bearing sets it's not going to hurt to keep the races together so this race was on the bottom of the carrier and this race was on the top so I'm going to make sure when they go back together that they go back together with the correct races on the correct bearing sets back from the press and this one is the top and that one there is the bottom so let's set up the diff housing to accept this and we'll get this bolted back in now I have previously cleaned up this entire diff casing so it is dry, there's a little bit of oil on those bearing journals, isn't going to hurt anybody. And run some oil on the bearings themselves. So here we can see the pinion and if we look here there's a number here 223 and that's matched 
to a number 223 on this crown wheel. So that's what we want. A little pin hammer and a little pin punch just to knock that roll pin back through. Being careful not to catch these threads with my punch. I don't want to destroy those. And once again, it's not going to hurt to have a little bit of oil on these surfaces. This is EP90, so it's the right gear for the diff. Now what we've got here is the backlash adjuster nuts and the bearing preload nuts and these special nuts are driven with this tool which is available on the 4B website under the LRTV collection and these are from the Land Rover Toolbox collection of tools. Now if you're a fan of Chris Higgins LRTV trailer fitter these are in his collection on the 4B website and you need this specialist tool to nip up these adjusters So just putting the last bolts in here and once again finger tight and the reason for finger tight and the reason for not driving them home with the gun is I want to make sure that we can still rotate these adjusting nuts and we'll do that with these. Now that's not it. There's plenty more to do to this diff. We have to set up the location of the crown wheel and we need to do that with a dial indicator, check the backlash on the gears and we need to set it up with the crown. We need to bolt these down to the proper torque and we need to put thread lock on these before this diff can be put back into service. There's one other thing as well that I need to do and that is to change the input flange on this diff. You saw at the beginning of the video it was a three point input flange from a rear differential and this is going to be a front differential. So as part of this differential overhaul I'm going to be changing the input flange. So that's as far as I'm going to go with it for today. Thank you for watching. And please take time to go visit the 4B website. Have a look, see what we've got to offer. You can find these specialist tools in our tools section. And head over to LRTV and check out Chris Higgins and check out the good work, the good videos that he does. These tools are in his collection. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Thank you.